Hi everyone, my name is John Doherty and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a search engine within your own product. Um, in today's video I'm going to be using the tech stack, the tech stack of Django, Next.js, React and Elasticsearch. So I'll be using Django to act as my REST API service and then I'll be using Elasticsearch for the actual storage of the NoSQL documents and processing of those documents. So I'll just give you a quick demo of the search working inside the product. So here we have a Kanban board with quite a large number of tickets. And as an end user, I wanna quickly find what's relevant to me. So if I search my own name, I can jump across the board and find all the matching tickets of the name John. So I searched the word John and it's showing me tickets that have the patient name of John. So. Uh, I'll give you kind of a quick overview of how the back end is working first and then I'll go on to the front end. In terms of the search itself, um, it provides the ability to search across multiple fields simultaneously. So you could have an object with 10 different you know, text field attributes and you can quickly scan across all of those attributes at the same time. There's also the autocomplete facility as well. So I'll show you an example of the autocomplete work in here. Um, if I go to this URL here, and if I search a uh, doctor surgery on my product called Irwin Practice, you can see I've only typed two characters, but it's immediately suggesting this search result uh, because of the closeness of the match. So that's just a kind of demo of the autocomplete functionality and it's quite a nice feature for your end users to have if they're searching for something that they're not 100% sure on, you know, the ex what that exact match is. Um, so it's nice having that uh, ability to provide autocomplete as well. So in terms of the back end, you can see all this code on side the GitHub repository. So if we go to the GitHub repository now, I go to, um, the link will be in the description. If I go to this health app demo, you can feel free to check it out all in here and uh, you can follow along in your own time. So I have an appointment repo class. I'm following the repository design pattern. And inside this repo class, I have a method called search which is providing Elasticsearch with a, a query called a multi-match query, which is in here. And the term, the variable term is basically what is being typed in this text field. So I'm searching the word John. That means that the term in this case will be John and this will just be a string. And I'm searching across multiple fields simultaneously. In this case, I'm only searching across two fields, but you have the ability to you know search across as many as you want and i'm searching across uh, name fields the name of the patient in this case and then i'm searching across the name who the ticket is actually assigned to so there's loads of different types of queries you can do on Elasticsearch. you know you can do exact match queries if you want you can search by date range you can even search by location uh, you know, latitude, longitude, you know, to provide relevant uh, results based on the user's, you know, current location. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you how uh, to actually populate an Elasticsearch index. So first you need to define a thing called an Elastic Mapping. I'm going to show you a quick example of that in here. Uh, it's under the Appointment Index class. So you define a name of the index, which is in this case, appointment underscore index. It has a schema and I'm defining my elastic mapping in here. And this is just telling Elasticsearch how to process each one of these documents and uh, how to support all the different types of search available inside it. So in this previous example in here, I was searching across the patient's full name so if we go down inside this document, we should see a patient object, which we can in here. And we can see that the type of this object is nested. And this nested object has its own properties, which can be found in here. 
and we can see here is the full name attribute which is search as you type so search as you type um, facilitates that autocomplete logic so not all fields are supported with the auto suggested results with Elasticsearch um, so you just got to Elasticsearch has different ways of optimizing how it stores data and in order to provide autocomplete functionality it needs to be able to quickly scan through quite a large quantity of documents so your index could contain a thousand you know documents for a small product but it could contain hundreds of millions on a bigger system like uh, you know a social media platform like Facebook or you know even Google itself which has hundreds of millions of documents inside its indexes and the easiest way of you know just thinking of an index is just you know a, a collection of documents that match you know a certain schema but the the real-time advantage is having all the data already collated in the one place and it doesn't have to perform any you know expensive queries each time it performs that search operation because everything it needs is already sitting there um elastic search has you know lots of different field types so the keyword type is uh basically for fields that are identifiers and you know you've got a, a geo point field as well which you know you can provide a latitude and longitude as i previously mentioned and tailor the results of a search result based on your user's location, which can be quite useful. And then you've got all your primitive types, which most people are used to, such as float and integer. So that's just kind of quick overview of the Elasticsearch mapping. And then once you've defined your mapping, you can actually go ahead and create an index. So inside my repo, I have a recreate index field. And basically what this is doing, is it's iterating through all of my Django models and for each model it's adding it into my Elasticsearch index. So I've followed this repository pattern and uh, this repository is essentially providing a layer of abstraction above multiple different Django models. It's just a, a type of design pattern but this appointment object would be made up of multiple sub Django modules. It's not, uh, it's not just one Django model gets one repository. A repository sits above multiple models. And uh, this get method is basically returning uh, an appointment schema, which the schema matches this elastic search mapping. So these two are um, in sync with each other. So that's kind of a quick overview of how those documents are getting added into the index. So just iterating over an index over a Django query set and it's for each you know item in the query set, it just adds it into the index using this add method in here. And another thing to note is that um, typically in Django, most people are familiar with the migration process for a Postgres database, but it's also important to remember how to migrate your Elasticsearch um, indexes as well. So if you uh, delete a field or you change the name of field, stuff like that, you need to update your Elasticsearch index as well. Um, so Elasticsearch provides these things that are called aliases. So an alias is a way of quickly changing the name of an index. So what you want is that you'll have an old index containing your old um, schema and you'll have a new index containing your new schema. And you're going to, first what you're going to going to do is you're going to populate your new index that has your new schema with all these documents and then once that has completed then you'll basically want to get rid of your old index but the thing is you don't, you don't want your users to experience any downtime so if um, if for example you immediately delete your old index and your users are searching at the same time their search re their search results will fail and we don't want that to happen essentially 
So the aliases within Elasticsearch provide us the ability to quickly flip the switch between the old index and the new index. And then that means that our end users don't actually experience any downtime and their search results are always working as expected. So that's just a kind of quick, quick tour of how that Elasticsearch migration process is working underneath the hood. Uh, I've also included a diagram of the migration process inside this repository, um, just this diagram in here. Uh, so, you know, feel free to check that out in your own time. So I'll just create a new index that has the new schema. It'll fill up that index with all the documents that should go in there. And then once that's completed, it will then flip the switch rather than just immediately deleting the old index and your, you know, your end users having downtime as a result. Um, so that's a kind of quick overview of that. And there is also the front end I would like to quickly talk about. So in here is a React hook. So each time I press a key inside a text field, so if I go in here, for example, if I type, if I clear that text field, I, you can see here all these requests firing off to my REST API service in the background. But each time I press a key, you can see that the uh, a bunch of requests fire off to the service. But one of the important things to note is that you can get a race condition within your React project where uh, it's displaying results of an older request because there's so many requests firing off at the same time. So what you want to happen is that you want to cancel any previous in-flight requests and then prioritize the results of the latest HTTP request. And Axios is a HTTP request handling library within React, and it provides the ability to uh, send a thing called an abort control signal to your request, and that facilitates that canceling procedure. So in here, you can see that I have a Axios get request and I've also passed in an abort signal so that if I need to cancel the request, I can do that. And, uh, and here I've got a React hook, that's a use effect hook. So uh, basically this hook has a teardown. So if, uh, if the user is pressing multiple keys rapidly, and there's a few requests in flight, it will trigger the abort method, which will then cancel this Axios request. And then I'll just uh, prioritize the latest one. So I'll show you this in terms of the actual, um, the network logs in Chrome so you can see for yourself. So if I search John, for example, and I open up this network tab here again, J, so you can see all those requests came through. And then if I type my name in quickly, we should see a bunch of canceled requests. So there we go. We can see that it's canceled the old ones and it's prioritized the new ones, which is uh, perfect. And then that means our end users don't experience any weird search results. And then that's achieved with the port signal inside Axios. Um, that's hooked up with our use effect hook that has a teardown in here, which is perfect. And um, yeah, and then also just, I'll give you a quick demo of the autocomplete um, in here. So it also perfort, you know, supports that um, same thing again, where it can cancel those previous requests and it just prioritizes the latest ones. And these requests are instantaneous, as you can see on screen, Elasticsearch can comfortably you know, search across, you know, tens of millions of documents and this whole thing has the ability to scale up, you know, quite comfortably. Um, so it just, you know, makes your product feel similar to say, a, you know, a Google, for example, that has that nice autocomplete search and it's very, you know, fast and easy to use. That's just a kind of quick demo of kind of creating your own search engine. Feel free to check out the repository here. Um, all the code will be included in this repository and the link will be in the video description. And thanks for watching. Bye.